You want to learn about making a build in Destiny, what you should know, things you should pay attention to, and overall how to do it. Let's dive in. Heads up everybody, my name is Sentinel Grey, and welcome to the channel. Builds in Destiny can vary depending on who you are, how you build it, and the purpose that you're building it for. Back in the days of Forsaken, builds would be pretty simple to a certain degree because getting armors to roll the way that you want them to was a nightmare. So before it was like, use this exotic armor and this subclass and this exotic weapon and you have a build. Now it's a bit more in depth. And listen, if this video ends up helping you out and you wanna help out the channel, please be sure to like and comment on the video as well as share this with anyone who might need the help as well. So let's start with our example and what you should think about in order while you're making a build. First is your armor mods. I'm going to be focusing purely on the combat style mod slot that you have in your armor instead of going over all four of those slots. The reason for this is because of the combat style mods are going to largely influence your armor later on down the road, which we will get to. Now, since this video is for new players who are just starting out in build crafting, I want to give you a build that will keep you alive as well as give you a few bonuses to your stats. The combat style mods we'll be using are Radiant Light, Charged Up, Taking Charge, Powerful Friends, and Protective Light. This is a very simple build that can be used on any class in the entire game to keep you alive whenever the fighting gets extremely rough. Granted, you might not have all these mods, and that's perfectly okay. If you want, you can write all these down and remind yourself to look for them whenever you log in and go visit 801 whenever you visit the tower. Going over each of these mods individually, Radiant Light is an arc mod that causes your allies to become charged with light when you cast your super near them. This also comes with a secondary effect when you have another arc mod equipped on either the same piece of armor or another arc combat style mod on a separate piece of armor. It gives you plus 20 strength. I'll come back to this, don't worry. Charged Up is a solar mod that allows you to hold an additional stack of charge with light, bringing your standard two stack up to three. Taking Charge is a general mod that doesn't have an energy type, which allows you to become charged with light whenever you pick up an orb of power. In case you didn't know, orbs of power are produced by either guardian super kills or multi kills with a fully masterworked weapon. Powerful Friends is another arc mod that whenever you become charged with light, nearby allies also become charged with light if they aren't already. Similar to Radiant Light, this also has a secondary effect that activates under the same criteria, but this mod gives you mobility, plus 20 mobility. Now, because you have Radiant Light and Powerful Friends, both of their secondary effects activate, which gives you plus 20 to strength and mobility without you having to use another arc energy mod. Finally, we have Protective Light. A void mod that while you are charged with light, you gain a significant damage resistance buff against combatants when your shields are destroyed. This effect though consumes all of your stacks of charge with light, and the more stacks that are consumed, the longer this effect lasts. The only downside to this mod is having minus 10 strength, but since we have the plus 20 from radiant light, this shouldn't hurt you too much. Now, why does it matter to figure out your combat style mods first? Well, notice how I was saying the energy type of each mod as I was explaining them. That's because those mods can only be placed on armor that has that specific energy. If I tried to put an arc mod on a stasis energy piece of gear, the arc mod wouldn't even show up on the list of options, which means we need two armor pieces that have arc energy, one piece that has solar, one piece that has void, and finally one piece that can be any type that you like. It's for this reason alone that I think if you start build crafting, it's going to be best to start with determining what mods you want to use on your armor first before a lot of other things. That way you don't end up masterworking a whole bunch of armor that you then have to re-masterwork just to change its energy type because the mods you want to use for the build. Since I already have this build made on my character, this is what I'm going to opt for. An arc energy helmet, solar energy gauntlets, an arc energy chest piece, arc energy boots, and a void energy class item. Now that I know what I need in terms of armor, let me see what kind of build I want to make with exotics and the subclass I want. The idea for this is going to keep not only myself alive, but also my friends as well, while also at the same time being able to clear a room with a single punch. 
To do this, I'm going to be using the Sentinel Titans Code of the Commander subclass tree with the exotic chess piece, the Heart of Inmost Light. Code of the Commander has the ability to attach Void Detonators to targets when they are hit with any of your Void abilities, regardless if it's your melee, grenade, or super. These detonators explode when the target has either died or taken a fair amount of damage. These explosions are also considered Void Ability Damage, which spreads more detonators to nearby enemies. This chain reaction effect can completely decimate an entire room of enemies from just a single punch or grenade. Believe me, I've done it multiple times already. All while this is happening, the resupply ability on the tree regains health, grenade, and melee energy for not only you, but any allies near you, no matter how far away you are from the explosions which could lead to you keeping your whole entire fire team alive while clearing a room with a single punch. As for the Heart of Inmost Light, using an ability, whether it be your grenade, melee, or barricade, empowers the other two abilities. Empowered means abilities have faster regen, melee and grenades deal more damage, and barricades have more health. All of that stacked together can lead to you having your abilities back in seconds, as opposed to waiting the time that your stats tell you it'll take on your character menu. Now let's move on to the rest of your armor and the stats that you want. As I said before, we want this build to keep you and your friends alive along with being able to clear a room with a single grenade or punch. To keep you alive, you'll want to focus on getting armor that has a decent amount of points in resilience and recovery. Resilience is how much damage you can take before you die or until you die. This also affects the Titan's barricade ability and how fast it comes back to you. And recovery is how quickly you start regenning health back after not taking damage. To keep your friends alive and the enemies dead, you'll want armor with high strength and discipline. Strength determines how quickly your melee ability regens, and discipline does the same for your grenade. For this build specifically, your mobility and intellect stats don't matter as much, but if you want to spread some love in those stats, you are free to. This is where you can start looking for armor for your build. Just look for pieces that have the stats that you want on them first. At this point, the energy type does not matter. Another thing that's worth mentioning is that you shouldn't worry about the role on your exotic piece either if, you, if an exotic is part of your build. The main reason for this is because it's hard enough to get this specific exotic you need to drop, let alone having the right stat distribution. As you play the game, you'll probably get closer and closer to the stat roll that you want on that exotic, so don't worry about it for now. Believe me, I've gone through four separate Hearts of Inmost Light to get the one that I currently have. After some time, you've collected the armor with all the stat rolls that you want. Now, let's just say, for instance, they all have the wrong energy on them. You can actually change the energy type on any piece of armor you own, regardless of what level it is. And yes, this includes exotics. Something to note about this is whenever you change an armor piece's energy from, like, let's just say, level 5 arc to level 5 void. To do that will cost all the materials it would take to level that piece of gear up to that point, plus the cost of changing it over. It's just how it is. This is why I say it's better not to masterwork items before you change the energy, because if you were to change the energy after you masterwork it, it would cost you a whole nother Ascendant Shard, and those things don't come cheap. Now, after you've changed the energy of all your armor that you need to, as a reminder, that is Head for Arc, Arms for Solar, Chest Arc, Legs Arc, and Class Item for Void, we'll move on to actually putting the mods on. Now, just to let you know in case this was a thought, the armor pieces don't have to be that specific. Like, Radiant Light doesn't only work on an Arc Energy Helmet. Radiant Light can be put on any Arc Energy armor piece. Like I said before, since I already have this build made, this is what I'm going off of, okay? The best thing for this is to go put on all of the mods that this build is centered around first. So, in that case, slot in Radiant Light, Charged Up, Taking Charge, Powerful Friends, and Protective Light first before you mess around with anything else. After that, see what other mods might help your build. I usually start with stat mods. The reason for this is just in case you think you are just out of reach out of that next stat tier, you can bump it up by adding one of those stat mods to help. Be careful though, 
Every mod has a certain amount of drain that it takes away from your armor energy. And with recovery being the most expensive at four energy, you better know how to work around it. After stat mods, we see if there's any other mods that can help. For example, since we have solar energy gauntlets, that means we can equip the impact induction mod on it. Impact induction will reduce your grenade cooldown every time we deal damage with our melee. Other mods you can slot in would be mods like Invigoration or Absolution on your legs and Distribution or Perpetuation on your class item. All of those decrease in ability cooldown if you fulfill the mod's requirements. So let's stop there for a second. This build is essentially done. We picked our combat style mods, we have a subclass and an exotic to work around, we know the purpose of what we want to do with this build, we have the armor and the right stat distributions and the right energy type, and we slot in all of our mods, so essentially, this build is done. You can take it out and use it in the field as you see fit. However, there's a few things that can take this build further. For example, we haven't talked about weapons yet. If you want the weapon I specifically use for this build, it's going to be Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo has a number of perks on it that make it perfect for this build. It gives you melee energy back when you damage an enemy with it and has the chance to fully give you a melee ability charge on a kill as well. And on top of that, whenever you get kills with it, the gun has a perk that works similar to Swashbuckler, so your damage increases per kill with the weapon. And it reloads itself when you get a melee kill with a gun on you. Monty does a lot, and honestly, I mean a lot more than it probably has any right to. But because of all those things I listed, this is perfect for our build. So we can have a melee ability back in seconds right after using it. In case you don't have Monty, a good substitute for this would be any gun that has the perks of Grave Robber, Demolitionist, Swashbuckler, Surrounded, or shotguns that have 1-2 punch. The last thing I want to leave you with is that you don't have to exactly follow these steps every single time you make a build. If you want, you can determine your subclass and your exotics first, or base the whole entire build on what a gun does. The possibilities and ways to start creating builds are endless. The biggest thing that I want you to keep in mind whenever creating your build is how much your armor energy impacts your build because of all of the mods and everything that you might want to use. And remaster working armor that is already masterworked is so incredibly expensive at the end of the day. I do not want anybody making that mistake. I hope this video has helped you at least a little bit in starting to craft your own builds. Just in case you need a place to start though, I have a number of basic builds already on the channel that you're more than welcome to look at and tinker with however you want. And if you do end up taking one of my basic builds to the next level, please let me know down in the comments below. I want to check out some new builds. But that is going to be it for me for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I will see you all next time. And remember, keep your heads up and be kind to each other. Bye now.